Today, I'd like to introduce you guys to Hans York. Hans is one of our Sync Pros in the Pro Feedback platform. Many of you guys that are on our platform know Hans very well. Um, many of you guys have already gotten feedback from him and have been very happy with the notes that he's given you. Uh, Hans is an utmost professional composer. Um, there are there are lots of people in this business composing, submitting to music libraries. One thing that stands out about Hans that I noticed from, you know, I don't know if it was a year or two ago when you first joined and got into the syndicate, is that Hans is one of these guys that he does everything at a 10 level, right? So he's been one of our um, um, instructors actually in Sync Academy. And when he puts together his tutorials for us, he goes to this next level of his production quality and how he actually edits his videos and presents everything. And he does the same thing in his music. He does the same thing in his DAW. He does the same thing in his relationships with libraries. So not only is he a phenomenal composer, many of you guys have seen and heard his music through his featured post on the platform, but he just has this ability and this, I think, a pride that he takes in himself for the work that he does because he knows this is going to have my name on it. I really want to, I want it to shine. I really want it to be high quality. So that's why I specifically reached out to Hans and brought him onto the platform because I wanted somebody like that to show you guys how to make licensable music. So Hans, thanks so much for being here, man. I want you to just give us a little brief background on your history, how you got into sync licensing and what has kept you in this business for the few years that you've been involved. Well, thank you so much for this kind uh, uh, introduction. I really appreciate that. Um, I'm a professional musician since I was 17 years old. That's when I started going on the road and playing. And uh, we have come from a, a very musical family. My uncle was a jazz piano player. My uh, uh, grandmother would play like Chopin and uh, classical music. And my mom wanted to be an opera singer. And she would have probably if the war would not have come in between. So um, I, they, they always supported me, uh, you know, especially when I, when I was uh, uh, younger in my teens. And um, I just recently reconnected with my mentor, a professor back in my hometown that I have to uh, credit for pretty much everything. He taught me most importantly, how I can teach myself. And that was one lesson that is priceless. That was, uh, uh, that was just amazing. And I reconnected with him and, and I knew instantly when we were on Zoom and started talking, uh, we are just back. It's, it's, it's amazing. Uh, uh, he's brilliant. And so, you know, I realized that no matter where you are and who you see, there was always people, there's a line of people standing behind them. So everybody stands off the shoulder, so to speak, of somebody else. Nothing comes from just because they are so great or anything. We all uh, have learned from others. We all uh, did mistakes and, and like utterly bad mistakes sometimes. Um, but I'm glad I kind of, you know, when uh, I, I think I got to a sync licensing about, uh, um, you know, three years ago, two and a half, three years ago. And I'm really, really glad I was, you know, a long, long time touring and uh, mostly with my own music, I was very fortunate that that my own music took off uh, and I could actually tour with with that. But um, uh, I think it was when when CDs wouldn't sell anymore that touring became kind of like, no, this is there's just no way to make that really work. And um, I always was a producer. I you know produced many albums for other artists in studios and I was always a composer. I, I love that and, and I love watching TV and films and all that. And right now it feels that in that genre, in TV and, and um, film, there is actually the most creative uh, possibilities are there because it's just like, it's about the emotion and you're like, how do you express the emotion? So you can't do anything. And I just love that. I was, I was really thrilled by uh, uh, the prospect of, of learning closer to, to uh, being able to express emotions. And some, most of the time, just one emotion, you know? So it was really, it was a challenge and, and I liked it, it worked out. And uh, your uh, platform and you in particular have been, uh, uh, you know, a mentor to me just as well. I learned so much from that. And uh, now I'm really grateful that I can give some of that back, you know? Um, in terms of the libraries, I, I just got in it. You know, I've, I think I, I submitted twice to a library and they were to, to two different libraries and one said instantly, yes. And from then on, it was just, you know, every album that I did was, was basically accepted. I'm currently working with three libraries. One is more like uh, um, they do more custom, custom material. 
and the other two are uh, uh, just regular. And I guess I have about, I don't know, three, 400 songs uh, in, in libraries at this point. I kind of lost track a little bit, though I have a good system <laughs> to, to find them. Um, and uh, the, the funnest part was actually that uh, some of my music that that was the first thing that got accepted, I think, uh, by Trevor's library uh, at the time, where I did dramedy. And somehow it was like when I started doing that, it was like a light bulb went on. I, I realized, wow, this is, I, I really love that kind of music and that kind of emotion that I could do with that. And uh, so I did that and got accepted. And then I had to learn how to forget what you've done and just keep on going. And um, I think it was in the beginning of this year, that's when I heard that actually that music was uh, placed uh, multiple times in Germany. Uh, that's where I'm from, you know, in Switzerland, in, I think it was in England and France. And um, so it was, it was just like, you know, wow, this is like a, two years later, almost something came around. And uh, it shows me kind of how this process um, is about really doing your best work, submit it, forget it, and keep on going. It is hard. I mean, the the Zooms, the the Zoom meetings helped me too greatly to realize to see some of the faces and to realize um, that we are not just working into the void. We do to some degree. You know, if if there's not somebody there that says uh, uh, I need uh, something custom, but most of the things are not, and so it's like you know, it can easily feel like you work into a void and to have a community and to see some familiar faces and to sometimes, you know, I'm also, I'm not uh, immune to say sometimes, I, I have no idea if I can do that, how long I can do that, right? Um, so it, it always helps. And I, you know, I got a, a great uh, uh, support from, from people that were on the Zoom and, and I gave support to the ones that were out there that were lost and, in, in space, so to speak, so to speak, you know. That's awesome, man. And it's, yeah, not surprising to me that you've done so well with libraries and had that much music. Cause when you were in the syndicate, I remember you were submitting to a lot of our opportunities and you were just nailing it. And, and I just, one thing that I think really stands out about you is that every time I had a brief and I gave reference and I had all these instructions, you just seem to always get it. You know, you had all, you had this ability to just understand exactly what we were really looking for. I don't remember you ever like missing the mark at all. Maybe not every track got accepted, but I don't remember you. I don't remember feeling that you were completely were left of center with what we were looking for. So there's definitely that that is a huge skill um, that can really separate somebody who really does well in this business from somebody who's maybe even got a lot of great composer chops, but they're just not ever nailing the brief. They're not ever really getting it, you know? So that's one of the main reasons why I wanted to bring you on for pro feedback is because you have this ability <clears throat> to really get it, to really understand that there's a very particular kind of niche thing that we do in this business. And there are many, you know, there's thousands of, of micro skills in order to enable you to do that. And that's what I know that you are giving all the members through your feedback uh, session. So um, I wanted to extend or ask you to maybe talk about one particular aspect you've noticed um, as you've been giving plenty of reviews already. Uh, maybe some common mistakes or one common mistake that maybe people are making uh, that you know that could be avoided very quickly maybe and that could uh, certainly ensure that they have higher successes of getting accepted and um, and not missing out on maybe royalties you know uh, I think one of the one of the parts that that shows up uh, more often than not is that I can tell that people do not have enough patience and that might sound strange when you hear it right away, but it is a patience for me, for example, to sit down and really become clear of what you want to do with your DAW. It's very powerful, right? And I can tell that most people just dive into it straight away. And then um, they, they kind of maybe get by accident, they come upon a, 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 like an emotion, but they don't realize it. And in the next, at the next turn, they are somewhere else. And then they name the thing. And that is, you know, I, I think in every, almost every feedback, I had to say something in terms of most uh, uh, music supervisors will probably see the name first. They have an emotion in their head. They know what they want. They see the name. And if the name does not represent it, it's, it's a two second ordeal and gone. 
And um, so I, I, every time I kind of stress, you know, become really clear and make that something, make your name something that draws me in, that gives me at least a hint of an emotion and some kind of a, use your language kind of in, like in the old ways where it was inspiring and it had, you know, where stories with something, you know, you find a name that gives a story where I instantly have something in my head and then I hear the first three notes and it's like, oh yeah, oh, I get it, right? So um, that is the part where most people, and they are, I'm, I was the same way. I, I, I did not like naming songs or like finding the exact spot. I always thought coming from a more, um, you know, artistic view, I'm, I'm going to express my emotion and that's, that's okay. But that's not, it's not, an, it's not in that regard an artistic endeavor, right? It is more, uh, uh, honing a quality where you kind of zone in onto one emotion and then are capable over time to really recreate that emotion with different instrumentation, with <clears throat> knowing how, uh, uh, you know, harmonies work, knowing how, you know, uh, um, yeah, just just knowing more about the the essence of what what people are doing, but that is something I could almost see with everybody that sent me something that there is a patience missing on really starting and going about it a certain way. Yeah, and I always talk about it like the cereal aisle when you go to the grocery store. So yeah. if you're in the mood for chocolate cereal, but every single cereal box is just printed, it's just a white box with black ink, and they just say Fruity Loops chocolate. You, you don't really, really necessarily get to <clears throat> get an instantly drawn to whatever it is you were looking for. So I always try to tell people, imagine your title is your marketing department of your song that you basically all you have to do is name it once and it constantly is working for you for free. You don't have to pay that marketing department ever again. You just basically do it once, do the work once. And like Han said, that title should be jumping out, leaping out. And not only, I think he's right, it, it not only should be conveying something very, very tied into an emotion or a mood that you wanna set, but also I think what the, the most powerful titles and the most probably lucrative titles are is they create a sense of curiosity of, hmm, what is that about? That really does, it's, it's close to what I want, but it's like, what would that sound like? I'm really curious about that. So rather than just saying, you know, an emotional day, which really doesn't say anything, um, you know, you could have <clears throat> acid rain, you could have, um, I don't know, you know, you guys be creative about that. I haven't named tracks in a while, but you can create any sort of a title that when you hear it, you just, it's a, a lot of times I find if it's visual, it's a really, it's a plus, right? It makes you feel like, hmm, that does sound really interesting. Um, and I, I'm really curious, like, what does that sound like? Um, and so taking just like a, five minutes, it's really just five minutes by about at the end of your entire creative process is basically a must because think about how much time you're putting into creating mixing and mastering your track it's probably four eight sometimes 24 48 hours long long periods of time and at the very end you're just slapping on a cheap label and going eh hopefully that does well right so it's, it's like you're discounting all that work you did by not doing just a small fundamental thing at the very end so it's why i have a whole tutorial dedicated to it in sync academy because yeah it's one of those things that not really taught, nobody really thinks about it, and it's kind of this afterthought at the end. We're all thinking about, how do I make music? Music, oh yeah, title, uh, whatever, throw it out. But it's like, no, 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 let's hold off. That's just as important, if not more important, actually, than all of this work, because if that title's not capturing the attention, nobody will ever hear the work, right? It's kind of like if you have a great product or a great service, and you don't market it properly, it could be, the, it could be solving world hunger, it could be creating world peace, possibly, but since you didn't market it or advertise it, nobody knows it exists. And so it's this wonderful thing sitting on a shelf somewhere and nobody's actually using it. So marketing your, your music is so, so important. So I appreciate that, Hans. Um, do you have any sort of, um, you know, we were talking before we just started recording here that you were saying that everybody kind of has something that usually is working, even if they're very, very kind of new to the business or even new to producing. If you can talk a little bit about that, that, um, you know, people were asking me like, are you really impressed with what you're hearing? Are you kind of like, oh my gosh, like shocked at how bad some of the tracks are, right? Um, I really want to get your your feel on like, what, what's the spectrum been like for the tracks you've reviewed so far? I think the spectrum has been all the way from like, uh, uh, like, wow, really, that's really good. You know, where I, I kind of had to look a little bit for, uh, um, I had to dive in deeper in terms of the feedback that I give. You know, sometimes when I hear something, um, that is on in a, in a beginner state, which is okay. That's that's kind of like that's why people. I was are there too. Here. We all were there. Right? Yep. Um, 
then it makes maybe less sense to give too much information on everything, on mixing, mastering. You know, there's one, one uh, thing where I just left it out. I said, you know, let's not look at mixing and mastering here. Let's, let's just look at how to, how to create it and how to structure it. And so it's more like about the ability to, to, uh, um, to touch into where somebody is actually, you know, where in the, in the world of that gamut that you mentioned is somebody, somebody is. And, uh, you know, on the, on, the, on the good side of the gamut, not good or bad, but on the, on the higher side of the gamut in terms of, of skill, it is, it is actually really becoming interesting because then I can uh, um, kind of go into really narrow details, you know, and, and then I can touch on some things that, that I think about it constantly when I create something that are interesting for me. But I know that when I tell that to somebody that is not there, it makes no sense or it's just you know, it just goes over their head and it's like, what are you talking about? Uh, so it's, it's finding the, the right spots and everybody has, a, I feel that the, um, you know, most of the times I would say 99%, I start a song uh, that I'm supposed to, to give feedback to. And I'm like, yeah, uh, that I like that emotion, right? There is, there is, I can, during the first four bars, usually, or for first eight bars, people, somehow have that and then they lose it so it's more about it's not that they start off with having nothing it's just that they start off with something and they can't quite make that connection yet of how to maintain the emotion or um keep a keep a steady line till the end right where there's sometimes you've seen that where there's so much information in there so many ideas in there and you wonder what well, you could have done three songs with that and another thing that I can absolutely see is that um, the missing of reference tracks um, where, and also sometimes probably where people think about sync licensing more like uh, that their music can be in films, you know, Netflix films or, you know, where you can, you can have something somber and, and mystical or whatever, but these are not, certainly not in the beginning, the opportunities that are open. Most of the time it is advertisement or it is reality TV. And that's kind of, you know, that's the, that's the reality of that. So it's not necessarily the composing, the beautiful, uh, um, love scene or, or that's that's not it so I have to sometimes say you know I go and uh, I usually there's a couple of really really good uh, libraries out there that when you search for certain music everything is is on a high level and their composers are fantastic and I'm sure that everybody can find something that they really want to do you know if it's classical or if it's acoustic or if it's EDM there's there's so much out there um, where they can just have a look on how somebody does it. And then either, and I said, you know, it, there's no harm done in completely copying what they, what you hear, you just can't use it, right? But uh, we all learned by that. I mean, I learned playing my instrument because I copied note for note of some, some of the artists that I love, note for note for years, right? And then at some point, I mean, something else would come out, you know, I wouldn't be just, people could maybe see, oh, you sound a little bit, there's an influence there, but it's not like, you know, I copy something, but that's a process. But first, you know, you can't, there's a, who said that there's a great thing. Uh, um, you can't fix what you can't understand, what you don't understand. And that is a lot of the stuff that I see where I have to kind of uh, um, be very deliberate in, in what I say, and find the one thing that they can fix, you know? And then the next time maybe they, they have that and then there's something else with, I mean, that's the usual process. Right? Absolutely, man. And that's what you're giving members. That's what we're all trying to give members is focus, right? And not giving yeah. them the moon, not giving them this laundry list of all the things they gotta focus on, but <clears throat> one or two things that this month you can really go back to the drawing board and beef up your production or mixing and ma mastering uh, skills. Come back to us, submit another track, and we can give you some helpful notes on pushing you along forward. So 
I think uh, I couldn't have said it better, man. So Hans, thank you so much, man, for uh, your, your time and your wisdom today. If you guys are not in uh, pro feedback and you think getting pro feedback from somebody like Hans or myself would be valuable for your career, there's a link below. You should definitely consider joining us. Um, we are still at the beginning stages of this process, so it's not sort of overcrowded yet. There's a lot of uh, space and we'll always accommodate anybody who wants to join, but there's definitely a lot of excitement and a lot of cool things happening in this platform and in this featured um, service that we're working on here. So I encourage you guys all to join us. So thank you so much, Hans. Appreciate it. Thank you, Jess. Yeah.